Hello, this is Eric White. In this screencast and in subsequent screencasts, I'm going to give an end-to-end -end overview on OpenXML development. OpenXML is all about developers. There are lots of other people other than developers who are interested in OpenXML, but as developers, we are the ones who really care about the semantics of all the elements and attributes in this standard. A great place to start is with the series of screencasts that are available on openxmldeveloper.org. If you'll go down near the bottom of the front page, you'll find this link to the OpenXML Developer Wiki. Here you will find the introduction to OpenXML screencast series. There are three screencast series in the wiki that are relevant to our discussion today. First is a basic introduction to OpenXML. This includes discussions on the tools, on the scenarios that OpenXML is interesting for, various developer techniques. There are two important screencasts on the open packaging conventions. You'll want to watch those screencasts. In addition, there are two other series. One is an introduction to word processing ML, and the other is an introduction to spreadsheet ML. If you will go through the videos in these screencast series, you'll be an expert in OpenXML development. An important thing to do as an OpenXML developer is to get the standard PDF on your computer. You can download the standard from the ISO website. There is a page on the ISO website called Freely Available Standards. You'll want this page here. It's at standards iso.org slash ittf slash publicly available standards. You'll find ISO IEC 29500 down near the bottom. The current version is ISO IEC 29500-1 2012 through-4 2012. There are four parts to the standard. Part one of the standard is the most interesting of the four parts. As a developer, you'll spend most of your time in this part because it defines the elements and attributes that you need to know about. In the table of contents of this PDF, we can find information about the main document story, paragraphs and rich formatting, tables, custom markup, and so on. You'll notice that section 17 is all about the elements and attributes. There's a, another section up here entitled Word Processing ML. As you probably already know, OpenXML documents are really just zip files that contain XML inside of them. Those zip files are called packages in the parlance of OpenXML, and the XML files inside of those zip files are called parts, whereas the reference material down here, word processing ML reference material, spreadsheet ML reference material, and presentation ML reference material, these define the elements and attributes and the semantics of those elements and attributes. Up here, we find three other sections entitled Word Processing ML, Spreadsheet ML, and Presentation ML. And these define all of the parts that we're interested in in an OpenXML document. It's worthwhile to browse through the part summary for the markup language that you're particularly interested in. You'll get an overview of all the parts that you'll see in an OpenXML document. Part two is on the open packaging conventions. This part of the standard defines all of the plumbing necessary for packages and parts. It describes how parts are related to other parts. It describes content types of parts. It defines relationship types. Each relationship in an OpenXML document has a relationship type. And we're interested in this when we do open XML programming. As I mentioned in the screencast series that I referred to before, there are two screencasts on open packaging conventions. I recommend that you start with those screencasts and then dive into the standard if you need to know more information about the mechanisms of parts and packages and relationships and content types. 
Part three is on markup compatibility and extensibility. OpenXML is designed in such a way that as Office suites evolve over time, an OpenXML document can contain older markup and it can also contain modern markup. Markup compatibility and extensibility explains the mechanism for handling this. The OpenXML SDK can give you help with dealing with markup compatibility and extensibility. For more information, look at this screencast. Part four is on transitional migration features. The OpenXML standard has a notion of transitional features and these are features that have been deprecated and are going to probably not be used very much in the future. Currently, you may need to know something about these. In OpenXML, there's also the notion of strict markup, and this strict markup makes no use of transitional migration features. At some point in the future, we'll no longer see documents with transitional migration features. One important point to remember is that the OpenXML standard is like an encyclopedia. These PDF documents are not meant to be read from beginning to end. They're meant to be read as you need to research specific elements and attributes. The last resource that I want to call out in this screencast is openxmldeveloper.org. You'll find a lot of content about OpenXML, including screencasts, blog posts, and articles. There's a lot of example code available on openxmldeveloper.org. One important feature of openxmldeveloper.org is the forums. These forums are very active. There are very good OpenXML developers who frequent these forums and answer questions. It's a great place to get started with OpenXML if you have questions. On the front page of openxmldeveloper.org, there's a content browser. If you need to find some specific information about some aspect of OpenXML, then you can come here and click on these checkboxes and a little JavaScript application will select those pieces of OpenXML content that you very well will be interested in. After you select checkboxes, immediately it presents those links that you're interested in right here. If you check more than one checkbox, it'll provide you with the intersection of those two keywords. You can specify a technical level, 100 being introductory material, up to 400 being extremely detailed technical in-depth content. You can specify that you want to receive results that only contain screencasts and video. One more important resource on openxmldeveloper.org are the various resource centers. There are open source projects that can save you a lot of time in your development effort. Document Builder enables you to slice and dice word processing ML documents, combining documents, splitting documents, and so on. Presentation Builder is the same thing for presentation ML. Power Tools for OpenXML is an open source project on CodePlex that provides lots of example code and guidance for doing sometimes fairly difficult things in OpenXML. When you click on one of these links, you'll find a table of contents with related material that you can use to get going with these various open source projects that can help you out in your OpenXML development. That's all I'm going to cover in this video. In the next few videos, I'm going to discuss the various tools that you can use that will make your OpenXML development a lot easier.